and come in on the backside and get to that base. Yeah. Hey, this young man who slid into Jesus, I know that in the scriptures, so don't, don't hold me against that. And he said, good master. He was a dude. Yeah. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Amen. And then Jesus began to, began to examine him. And how God examines us today is through our life and the trials and tribulations of our life. Right. Let's go ahead and give God praise. That's how he examines us. He don't come down and stand in front of you and say to you, Amen, Pastor Robinson, do you really love me? Amen. He don't do that anymore. Amen. He don't say that now. He don't do that to you. I, I won't say he won't do it. That's just normally not the way he does it. What he will do is, I'll stand before the church as I did this morning, and I'll say to you, I'm glad to be saved. Uh -huh. The Lord in heaven will look down, Jesus will look at me and say, okay. He said, he's glad to be saved. And I'll say, I'm happy that Jesus brought me out of sin. Right. And the Lord said, that's good. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to run, I'm going to live for Jesus yeah. all the days of my life. Yeah. The Lord will say, that's my God. It's yeah. mine and his plans is in line with my word. Yeah. But Jesus said, Ah, uh, look at that, amen. He's saying all this, but I don't know if he's going to do it. Amen. And so to prove not to Jesus, because he knows everything. Everybody say God knows all. I know God. He don't need to test us for his knowledge. He needs to test us for our knowledge. Amen. Just, amen. Just like this young man, this young this young rich young ruler, when he came to Jesus and he said, Good master, what I do be saved. And yeah. Jesus said, Obey the law. And he named off some of it. The young man said, I've done all that from my youth up. The Bible said that Jesus looked at him and he loved him. Saints of God, believers in Christ. Your testimony is one thing, but the proof of it is in the outliving in your life. Amen. So God will help you and help me find out where we are. Amen. He'll allow calamity to come in our life. You're a young person with a business. Amen. You're growing it. Amen. You hire some people and they come in and you train them. You pour into them. Amen. You reveal your business plan to them. You told them what your vision was. Some way, somehow, maybe not every day, but enough for them to discern which way you're going. Amen. And one of them is a snake in the grass. Amen. Just learning and learning and gleaning. And suddenly they leave. Amen. And take all of that that you poured into them and go out and try to take your business people. Amen. And then you'll set way back. Amen. Jesus said, all right, I'm going to see if they still love me. Amen. I'm going to see if they still love me. I'm going to see if they are really what they say they are. Amen. And uh, when that happened, Jesus taught his disciples. He told her, he said, the disciples said to him, Lord, Peter did, said, Lord, we have left everything. When the Lord was talking about this young man, he talked about riches. He said, you know what? It's written in the scripture that uh, uh, before a rich person can get into heaven, uh, no, first thing the Lord said, it's harder for a rich person to get into heaven than it is for a camel fully loaded with, uh, with, his, with his load that he brought from the market. Uh -huh. You know camel's pretty tall beasts. And the gate, that little U bubble that used to go into, wasn't built all that tall. Mm -hmm. Loaded camels had to be taught to get down on their knees mm -hmm. and do a, a wiggle. Whoop, 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 right through the gate. Mm -hmm. And then get back up and head for the market. Yeah. Jesus said, rich people, not because, it, he's not saying you can't be rich and be saved. All what right. he's saying is, most rich people will somehow or another let their riches mm -hmm. and all that they have earned and all, yeah. it'll get in the way. It'll become a burden mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. It will block them. It will cause them to pay more attention to stuff yeah. than to the master. Amen. Yeah. And so, and you can see it in this young man when Jesus yeah. said, yeah. you got to get rid of all your stuff. Yeah. He said, oh no. Mm -hmm. That was in Oh no. I really can't do that. Yeah. So when he was running to Jesus, the question is, which way was he running? Mm -hmm. He thought 
he was coming to Jesus to hook up. Receive blessings, receive knowledge, become a, a, an apostle. Get in there, get in the kingdom work of God right along with his riches. Well, let me share something with you. What would have happened is he would have got in there and uh, all, most of us as parents, most of us as we were growing up, we coming back to this point. On green holidays, and I'm almost finished, I'm going to come in in a few minutes. And on green holidays like Christmas and other holidays during the year, Thanksgiving, people buy, but especially Christmas, you buy, you exchange a lot of gifts. When I was a youngster at home, uh, we were pretty, not, not real well off. We were just, we were, the share, we were the sons and daughters of a sharecropper. A sharecropper is a farmer, and I'm not trying to talk down to y'all, y'all probably already know. He's a farmer that rents other people's property. And he works other people's property. And uh, the contract is that when the harvest come in, the boss who owns the land, he gets a large share. And you're left with whatever's rest. Most sharecroppers try to work 30, 70, or 60, 40. 40% 40 would go to the owner, and he didn't do nothing but own the land. And the other 60% goes to you. And you got to live off that 6%. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, this young man, he wanted to. But children, when they get a gift, we, I remember in our home, when my father was able to buy the first bicycle for all of his seven boys and two girls. Right. One bicycle. Mm -hmm. Red bicycle. I forgot the model number of it. Pretty little thing. Red. Beautiful. We rode that bike to death. Nine people. My turn. Nope. It's my turn. Yeah. Rode it. We would get in pushing and tugging and we'd fall on the ground and pop buttons and, and throw dust in each other's face and get up and jump on the bike and ride off into the sunset until dad and mom kind of said, y'all don't work on a deal here where it's amicably changed from one of you to the other. We're going to take the bike and lock it up and we'll be walking. We worked it out then, bro, because we want to ride that bike. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the point of the matter is this. We buy our sons and daughters gifts. They are so happy on Christmas. Yeah, I got what I wanted. I got the game. I got this. I got that. But watch them little guys. Watch them little rascals. After about the first week and the second week and maybe the first month, after a while, you find that toy laying in the yard. Mm -hmm. And you go, where's all the enthusiasm? I just bought that thing a month ago. But now they're walking around it like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Won't bring it in. I'm raining on it. Won't bring it in out of the weather. Nothing. But uh, right after Christmas Day, woo, we were all locked into it. That's the way that young man would have been if he would have came to Jesus with the riches. He would have came with a thunderbolt. It would have fizzled out. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And the Lord would say, Judge, yeah, what you doing today? I'm going to take care of my business. Uh, how about the kingdom of heaven? Oh, Lord, that's why I have to wait. I, I, I've got to deal with my business. I'm making a big deal here. Signed a huge contract. Kingdom of God is going to have to wait because i got to deal with this first. But the Bible declared, Jesus said, you have got to love me yeah. with all your heart. Uh -huh. Everybody say all your heart. All your, all your mind, all your, all mind, your soul, all your and soul, all your spirit. And all your spirit. He could not do that. That's why the Lord challenged him yes. up front. Yes. Said, take all of your riches and get rid of it so it won't be a problem. So life will be, will be we'll be doing fine. We'll be walking with the Lord and in church and loving God. And suddenly, life will throw you a curveball. Something will happen, knock all of the wind out of your sail, just like that, that statement. Sell all and give it to the poor, did, the, did the, the blue blood guy. Amen. And we'll stop and say, Lord, why is this happening to me? Hey, am I not serving you with all of my heart? The Lord will say, yes. Am I not doing all that you told me to do? Except sometimes, I want to be honest with you, sometimes we think we are serving God with all of our heart. We are not. All right. We think we are doing this or that, and we are not. Right. So God sends us a wake up call. He will throw some calamity in your life. Oh. He will knock all of the wind out of your sail. Yeah. And then you will be standing there with the problem right in front of you. And you will have in your mind the knowledge of God, the faith of God. Uh -huh. And you, you would have been taught, <laughs> you 
would have been taught many times to trust God in good times and in bad. But when that thing hits you, it's big in your life. It's like a mountain in your life. Uh, you get to be like David when either he was chased by Saul or chased by one of his two sons that tried to overthrow him. And he said in one occasion, the Lord is my shepherd. Watch his words. And I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green he restored my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, uh, David learned how to do it. I would fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. In other words, David was saying, I'm not going to let any of my problems get bigger than my God. Uh -huh. Clap your hands and give God praise. David went on to say, His God is so great and so powerful, He will establish a table in the presence of his enemies. He will set up a, a banquet table in the presence of his enemies. I want to say this. When your faith gets you to that spot, it's not long before your deliverance comes. It's not long before you're going to come out Hallelujah. on the other side. Your test will be over yes. because you passed the test. You didn't say, Amen, God, the problem is too great. You said, God, you are greater than the problem. Yes. Clap your hand and give God praise. That's where God. And that's where God wants all of us to be. Yes, yes. So problem are gonna come. Just like this rich young man. He was not expecting that curve. Mm -mm. Brothers and sisters, he was he was not expecting that curve. He was expecting the Lord to say to him, All right, tell you what, give me a piece of paper. Give me, give me a piece of paper. He expected Jesus to go, okay, number one. You need to do that. Number two, you need to do that. Three, four, five. You do all that, <clears throat> you're in. You're saved. That's what he was expecting. But did he get that? No. No, he didn't. God put him to the test right away. Yeah. Amen. Right away. Yeah. Amen. Because God wants to do something for us. Turn in your Bible to Peter. Turn in your Bible. <clears throat> I think it's First Peter. Amen. 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 First Peter. Uh, Peter wrote two books. First and Second Peter. And it talks about uh, testing and trials. It's First Peter. First Peter, I think it is the fourth chapter. Yeah. And the theme is announced in the first verse. Peter's writing to us, and he's writing to Jewish Christians. <coughs> they used to be Orthodox Jews, and um, I know that the real Orthodox Jews, uh, they had some difficulty with uh, Jesus because of who he claimed to be and who he taught that he was. And, so they, they, they remembered God's age-old admonition to them, where he told them, uh, I am the Lord thy God, and I am one. And uh, he told them to have no other gods before him. So they were locked on, and, and rightly so, the oneness of God and the singularity of God. So when Jesus would say things like, I and my Father are one, or when you see me, you see the Father. That caused a little problem with the real Orthodox Jews. So they had some problem with it. But after he lived and died and got the church going and Peter's writing to the, the Christians, the Jewish Christians who accepted Christ, verse 1, he said, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, what did he say? What else did he say right after that? For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, what did he say? Arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. In other words, Christ's mission is to get us out of sin. Amen. To teach us to live holy and righteous and teach us everything we need to know so that we will not live in sin. He goes on to say, then he, that person who has ceased from sin, then he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Say, for the time past of our life may suffice us, that's enough for us, 
to have wrought, to 